Now after that, we head into a Charlotte Flair promo. Now this is every Charlotte Flair promo I've ever heard in my entire life. I am the queen, I am the best, I am a flair, I am the ladder, I am the opportunity, I am, I am, I am the one, 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 now, in the midst of her promo, listing her accolades, she brings up how she's a one-time Divas champion in the final. She's a five-time Raw Women's champion and a five-time SmackDown Women's champion, making her an 11-time Women's champion in WWE. And when I heard that, I was hella confused because I said, hmm, well, if I'm correct, Weren't you a two-time NXT Women's Champion? You know the championship you beat Rhea Ripley for last year at WrestleMania? Like, what the fuck? Like, how, how did, how, who scripted her to not mention NXT at all? The same brand that Rhea Ripley, her opponent, came from. The same brand she came from. The same brand she was on last year. This time last year, Charlotte Flair was on NXT. And they scripted to her to completely ignore her whole NXT run. Completely insulting. Insulting to NXT. That WWE made them feel that insignificant. But I, I that's not even the end of it. I'm going to continue on that rant. A bit later on in this and i can't get too heavy because my throat hurts but i'm going to talk about it i thought that was crazy we really came out and it led to her getting a rematch in the main event against charlotte for the women's championship so then we got bobby lassie now bobby lassie is a wwe open challenge he's going to defend the WWE championship against anybody who accepts the open challenge and who accepts the open challenge but the returning keith lee keith lee's been out of wwe for seven months since before Royal Rumble. And this is his return match. For the WWE Championship. And everyone's all hype and excited. Like oh my god. Keith, and, I'm, and I'm sitting here like. Do y'all really think. For a second. That Keith Lee is going to beat Bobby Lashley. Out of the blue. For the WWE Championship. I don't. Y'all y'all are high as hell or something. Y'all must have gotten into Matt Riddle's stash. If y'all think Keith Lee was going to beat Bobby Lashley on the show for the WWE Championship. Now, if this was a regular singles match, yeah, go ahead. Be pissed about him losing because he did lose. But this was a WWE Championship match. There was no chance Keith Lee was going to beat Bobby Lashley. Should he have lost? No, he shouldn't have. But this was also a WWE Championship match. What should not have happened was that they should not have had Keith Lee in this match, period. If Keith Lee was going to return, he should have returned against somebody else and won the match and built up to this match. But to have him return against Bobby Lashley and lose, that did Keith Lee no favors whatsoever. And that's where I think fans got pissed. But I don't really have the vernacular to get pissed about this because, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's, it's fucking Monday Night Raw. What made me angry was after the fact, because out comes Billiam Goldberg dragging his old ass out to the ring to let Bobby Lashley know that he's next. And I said to myself, I said, hmm, well, Bobby Lashley, uh, he, he has a lot of people that could challenge him for the WWE Championship. Honestly, I would have preferred Keith Lee and Bobby Lashley rematch at SummerSlam. But out comes Bill Oldberg, the same Goldberg that lost the WWE Championship to Drew McIntyre at Royal Rumble this very year. He lost his championship opportunity to Drew McIntyre. And prior to that, he lost his last WWE Championship match to Braun Strowman at last year's WrestleMania. So he's had two WWE Championship matches. Technically three because he had to beat somebody to win the championship. He beat The Fiend. So he's had three championship matches. And two of them, he lost. The last two, he lost. But he gets to walk in and declare that he's next. 
What did you do to get that championship other than be Goldberg? But fans, they cheer this. You people, and you know, I don't mean that. You know, I don't mean that. You people out there that cheer this shit, you are the reason why this company is as bad as it's ever been. Because you should be rejecting Goldberg getting a championship opportunity against Bobby Lashley. You should be rejecting Bobby Lashley beating Keith Lee. You should be rejecting the next match I'm going to talk about, but you keep cheering them. So I don't want to hear you motherfuckers go online and complain when you cheer this shit. When you go out there and you cheer Vince McMahon coming out. You're part of the problem. And that's why I get into the next match. Karrion Cross versus Jeff Hardy. Karrion Cross is the NXT champion and represents the NXT brand. And how did they debut him? On the Monday Night Raw brand, they strip him of everything that he is. His entrance is not the same. No Scarlet. No monochrome effect, which is black and white for all of you who are not educated in, you know, camera work, which I don't expect you to be. No death of camera field. No smoke. No traditional walk down. Nothing. He, he emerges from some darkness with this warrior pose and he walks down to the ramp. And yeah, he looks cool. He looks menacing somewhat, but he looked far more menacing with his traditional NXT entrance with Scarlet and all that was stripped away from him. And his opponent was Jeff Hardy and Jeff Hardy. I was I, I marked out. I marked like all of you did after 10. What was it? Maybe not 10, 11, 12 years. This guy finally got back no more words one of my favorite theme songs of all time is jeff hardy's no more word theme song from back in 2007 to 2010 and he got his theme song back and the fr and the crowd went insane i went insane but that's when it started that's when it started that's when you realize that carrying cross was done for because Think about it this way. And a lot of you probably don't even realize this, but I want you to really think about what I'm about to say to you here. Karrion Cross, a guy with a very specific entrance on NXT television, had that stripped away from him. Bare bones, completely. But then Jeff Hardy, a guy who lost a slew of matches from what I heard and wasn't on TV for quite some time, came back to no more words to his old entrance that they knew would pop the crowd. So from the very entrance, they already made Karrion Cross look insignificant and beneath Jeff Hardy. From the very beginning of the entrance, he looked beneath Jeff Hardy. But then you get into the match that only lasted one minute and 40 seconds. And Jeff Hardy power bombs Karrion Cross off the top rope, bridges the rope, so he cheated technically, Bridges the ropes and pins the NXT champion. Jeff Hardy pins Karrion Cross. It is absolutely embarrassing and baffling that they did this to the NXT champion. The same NXT champion who was undefeated up until that very match. That very match, he was undefeated, walked in with a streak, with a purpose, and he lost in two minutes to Jeff Hardy. And I have to take this back to 2015, when Kevin Owens made his debut on Monday Night Raw as the NXT champion against John Cena. And when John Cena and Kevin Owens had their very first match, do you want to know who won? Kevin Owens won their first match. He won their first match. And guess what? He didn't last two minutes. He got 15, 17 minutes with John Cena. He got a classic out of John Cena. And he won. And you want to know what that did for Kevin Owens? It made him look like a star. You want to know what that made for NXT? It made NXT look prevalent. It made you want to tune into NXT because Kevin Owens looked like a credible champion. That was six years ago. Six years later, 
you have a guy who arguably may have been a bigger deal than Kevin Owens because he has a he has a more profound entrance and he's undefeated. And this is how they treat him? They bury him in two minutes? To Jeff Hardy? I I can't I honestly don't understand why Vince McMahon hates NXT so much. I'm convinced that this man hates and he resents NXT. I think he resents NXT from the call-ups that he repeatedly keeps on putting down underneath of everybody else to carrying cross as the NXT champion. I think Vince McMahon truly just resents the fact that NXT has been looked at as the better brand for years. And now that they've been beaten by AEW and ran off of television, he honestly sees NXT as a pile of garbage. That's what I believe. I might be wrong. I've heard rumors that they want a humble Karrion Cross. Welcome to the big leagues kit. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Get the fuck out of here with that welcome to the big leagues kid bullshit. You mean to tell me that Karrion Cross needed to get humbled, undefeated as the NXT champion? I refuse to believe that. But here I am also believing that Vince McMahon believes that he hates NXT. I don't know what to believe. But here's one thing I do believe. If you're a fan of NXT, you have every right to be upset and angry and pissed at WWE. Because this is a WWE brand that is being treated not like the third brand, but they're being treated like the bottom of the barrel here. Honestly and truly, why do we even watch NXT if this is how they see them? If this is how the big guys, the big leagues, sees NXT, why even fucking watch and give them your time? This two minutes summarized how I feel on NXT right now. It's bottom of the barrel, and it's irrelevant. Just like Karen Cross feels after this performance. <sighs> I just can't help but even laugh at this whole situation I'm talking about right now. But rant over. I can't even muster up the energy to get angry at this because my throat hurts still. <laughs> also coming out of that, WWE just announced NXT TakeOver 36 happening the day after SummerSlam. As if you should give a fuck, though, because the NXT champion is a piece... <laughs> I'm, I'm done talking about it. 